Guys, good morning. Welcome to today's Daily Devo. We're continuing our series, Walking in the Spirit. And one of my favorite illustrations of this is in Matthew chapter 4. So if you have your Bibles, open up and turn to Matthew chapter 4. And as you're turning there, let us know where you're watching from. Love to say hi to you. Love to know how far these are going out. Okay. Matthew chapter 4. So as we're walking in the Spirit, there's going to be temptations that come against you. When you said yes to the Lord, the devil doesn't like that, and he's going to try to mess you up. Now, he is crafty. I would love to tell you that the devil is creative. He's crafty, not creative. The same three temptations that he's going to give to Jesus right here are the same three he did in Genesis, and the same three he applies to our lives. And you, as we say these, you'll start to resonate with them, and you're going to say, oh, okay, I see. It says, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. To me, this is one of the more comical verses in the Bible. After 40 days and 40 nights of not eating, he was hungry. No kidding. Yes, he was hungry. Then the tempter approached him and said, if you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Here's your first temptation, lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. There's lust of the eyes. And then there's the pride of life. Lust of, these are the three areas that the devil's going to try to tempt you. So as you're walking in the spirit, there's going to be these things. And if what you're deciding as you're walking are these things, you aren't walking in the spirit. You're walking by a different thing. So he says, turn these, these stones into bread. Now, this would fulfill his desire because he's hungry. And, and Jesus says this in verse 4. He answered, it is written, man must not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Now, he's saying, if you are the son of God, prove it. Prove yourself. Now, I want you to know, if you're walking in a way of approval to prove your worth or to fulfill a need so that you could be accepted by things, this isn't the way to do it. I need to make sure that when I'm walking, I'm pleasing the Lord, not man. And if I were to, if Jesus were to do this, he could do this. In fact, the stones at this time right here, the ones that Jesus is looking at, they were a limestone. In fact, from a distance, they actually looked like bread. And so imagine you're seeing actually Jesus' humanity as he's hungry, walking, and you see that these things are there that could tempt him to want to eat them, and the devil's going to play on this. So he's saying, hey, turn this, prove it, fulfill a fleshly need that you have. And Jesus didn't want to fulfill a fleshly need if it wasn't from the Lord. So he says this, then the devil took him to the holy city, had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written, he will give his angels orders concerning you and they will support you with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. This is the pride of life because he's saying if you are the son of god let's have everyone see what you are about ladies and gentlemen boys and girls of all ages come check out the flying jesus as he jumps down from here angels will catch him right before he falls it's a great sight everyone come on jesus everyone wants to know that you are the messiah now remember right here when jesus is on the scene they're thinking that the messiah he's coming to be a miracle man that is a miracle worker that has all these works and proves himself to be the Messiah they're waiting for. It's an earthly kingdom. And Jesus is like, I'm thinking of a future kingdom. So he's saying, prove it to everyone. Show everyone. They'll all kind of want to see what you're doing. They want to see what you're about. So this is the pride of life. Again, if you're trying to get approval, you're trying to make your kingdom about yourself here on earth. That's not the way that we should be walking. The way that we're walking needs to be a kingdom that points upward to a kingdom that will not fade away. Whatever I'm working for down here, it's going to go away, except the word of God. Things will come, things will go, the grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord will last forever. So he's saying, you can do this. This is great, man. You got pride. People will come from all over to see this, but Jesus says this. He says, Jesus told them, it is also written, do not test the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to them, I will give you all these things if you fall down and worship me. This is less of the eyes because he's seeing everything the world has to offer. Then Jesus told him, go away, Satan. 
For it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left and angels came and began to serve him. What I love is angels did come and take care of him if he had stuck around. But Jesus told him to go. He flees at Jesus' command. And what he's saying is, I will give you all these things. And this is lust of the eyes. And there's a lot of different lust of the eyes that there are out there. And there could be things that take up your, your sight, such as cars, uh, women or men, pornography. Things that our eyes are attracted to and we're saying, I want that. Which is what Adam and Eve caved into over at the Garden of Eden. And so when you are walking in the spirit, there's the demonic that's going to hit you on sides, and these are the three areas that what they're going to tempt you in. And I want to say one thing before we end it. Lust of the flesh, we sometimes coordinate that with a negative thing, but it's just fleshly things. There can be things such as music, TV, your family. These are flesh things, and they're not all bad, but when they do become bad is when they take up all your time away from the Lord. I want to make that clear as well. So as you're there, look out for these three temptations as you're walking with the Lord. And the best defense that Christ used against the devil was the Word of God. He is the Word of God. He knows the Word of God. He has that in him and through him. And the devil had to flee. Now, is this something as you're walking in the Spirit that is living in and through you come these three temptations? So let me know which one of these stood out to you. And we would see you next time.